All right, there we go. I think we are live. Let's just get cracking. Um, hi everyone, how's it going team here? And this is uh, part one, or I guess live stream one in the series uh, on, or wait a second, I gotta say that correct because someone in the comments said, hey, you're saying series or seri series actually, as you say serious. So this is live stream number one in data science series. And today we're going to build an input component or input microservice uh, that will actually scrape the data from the web and provide input for our uh, data processing pipeline, right? So uh, as you can see here, I already mentioned this, I think I've created a new uh, repository for this. Uh, we now have the nice organization in case you missed uh, my uh, Twitter announcement. Um, yeah, let's, let's get cracking. So I have the folder here and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to have a bunch of subfolders. So I'm going to do a readme md here, um, fill it out at some point. So just do building uh, data science with JS for now. That's it. And we're going to say, so now what I'm thinking is we can basically, uh, there's two ways of doing it. So the way you would do it normally is that you would have um, some sort of continuous input source that basically will scrape your data every X hours, minutes, days, whatever is your frequency, and then throw it into the pipeline, right? In our case, that doesn't make a lot of sense because we're not running the whole thing. So I'm thinking we're gonna do a data source that would do processing on requests. So that basically, since we're working with games, we can use, um, say, OpenCritic, right? So this is a nice website. We can take it as a basis for um, our input. And basically we can throw in a game name or a game URI, I guess. Now name probably will work best, right? So we say, okay, Destiny 2, for example. Uh, we hit search and uh, like there's an enter button. Okay, so it just gives the prompts, okay. So basically you throw in the name, it finds the page and then scrapes all the reviews. So I guess those are the links for the reviews. I corrected my assumption. Uh, ah, there we go. Okay, now critics summary. Yeah, there you go, critics. And there's the li links to the read full review is what we're interested in, right? There's a bunch of them. So that probably will be fun. Uh, we might as well gather the numbers to see how they correlate to the what's actually written in the text. That will be fun. But okay, uh, so let's start with uh, creating, um, let's call it open critic input service. Just to be consistent, right? Um, I don't think we actually need that. So I'm gonna close it. We're gonna go into the open critic input service. And then I'm gonna open code here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna say yarn in it. It's gonna be opening uh, version 0 0.1, for example, right? This is um, data input, uh, come on, microservice that uh, scrapes um, reviews from open critic by game. No, that's. Uh, Open data microservice that gets all reviews. Uh, now, God damn it, that was the wrong button. Let's try that again, zero, one, zero. Um, let's, okay. Data input microservice that fetches uh, all the available, available reviews for a given game from open critic and this is exactly what it is entry point is going to be index.js repository url is going to be this um on there you go and author is uh tim hermilov gamma light um mit is fine private no i guess that's it so rm yarn or lock, we don't really need that. Okay, so we got our that. We got our nice basic uh, package JSON here. Uh, what we what are we gonna do next? We need index.js, right? So index.js is gonna be simple. So we're gonna say start service. Uh, we're gonna have our start service function that is gonna be in 
source folder and then we're just gonna stay our service that's it that's all we want from index source here we're gonna have index and that's gonna be our service now before we get programming uh, the service let us um, talk a bit about what we're gonna use so as I said before uh, hey Renato um, cool uh, you're finally watching one of my streams so welcome uh, yeah so as I was saying um, since it's gonna be microservices I said we're gonna use a message bus and uh, you know we're gonna pick a simple one RabbitMQ this is what I've used in most of the projects so far like there's plenty of different message buses but RabbitMQ is um, old enough stable enough and f or reliable enough let's put it this way and flexible enough for most of the scenarios let's put it this way right if you were talking like super big data then like I mean I, under super big data I mean like high velocity data we just go like you know in gigabytes per minute then you might need something like um, and I forgot the name of it uh what was the name of it uh come on everyone talks about it right apache kafka there you go so you might need something like this but uh you know for most of sort of low velocity use cases where it's just a few megabytes per second rabbitmq works perfectly fine um i mean i've heard that it actually used under very high loads as well for example google achieved like few million messages per second i assume they are pretty large so you know it's i mean it's it's a good choice it's like 10 years rabbit and q it, it's been developed by um a bunch of people for quite i mean it, it uses erlang so it's very stable uh in terms of you know failovers and it's very quite trivial to uh distribute it and spawn more instances of it and make a cloud out of it basically you know to distribute the load and so on and so forth so we're going to use RabbitMQ basically it uses AMQB protocol um, has amazing documentation so if you um, have not seen it before and have not have no idea how to work with it I highly recommend looking at their tutorials and docs because once you've read all this like six tutorials they have here, you will know everything that RabbitMQ can do. And they have tutorials for each language, which is, you know, very nice. Okay, so um, what I'm gonna say is, I'm gonna say we have description, then we're gonna have scripts here, and we're gonna say rabbit start. I'm gonna put a RabbitMQ, um, let me just make sure that my Docker is not running. So I'm gonna go to Docker Hub and run our RabbitMQ within the Docker as usual. Uh, let me make it slightly bigger okay there we go rabbit uh i think it was rabbit mq yeah there's an official image for that of course mm, now the question is which port do we use so we don't really care about persistence right now i'm gonna copy that so we need minus d host name doesn't care name it's gonna be uh be xjs rabbit let's just call it or maybe bs rabbit let's just call this it's going to be data science rabbit um and we need to forward port but i always forget what kind of port rabbit uses is there yeah there is okay there you go. so there's oh yeah we actually might want to run the management rabbit because then we'll have uh, access to nice ui so um I copy that and kill say rabbit management and then the ports are going to be this is the UI part, right? We're gonna uh, route it to 8080. I guess 8080 is not, let's just route it to the same port. Why not? And then the port for RabbitMQ is, uh, I keep forgetting. I don't think they have it here actually. RabbitMQ default ports. I uh, always have to Google that stuff. So let's see, 5672, there you go. Okay, cool. So we got our rabbit and then we're gonna have rabbit, uh, it's gonna be docker comma here docker stop ds rabbit docker rm ds rabbit so it's gonna basically remove it right so we're gonna say yarn rabbit start there you go what we been say so now we have our uh let's just check the logs real quick working just fine so we got it started yep works Perfectly okay. Okay, so now we have the RabbitMQ. 
And here comes the interesting part. So there's a bunch of ways of working with uh, RabbitMQ with from nodes. So like, yes. And uh, if we're talking about the libraries, um, there is um, several of them. So this one a year ago, five months ago. Yeah, not, I mean, five months ago is not too bad. It was actually also five months ago. This is what I prefer. So it's a um, MQP node uh, library. It's called the MQP lib here. Um, it seems to be pretty stable. I mean, I've used it in uh, quite a bunch of projects and it essentially gives you access to the pure Rabbit API, right? Um, Rabbit operates within uh, channels. So you can build channels essentially and then send messages to channels. Um, maybe it's a good idea to talk a bit about concepts here. So uh, Rabbit has a bunch of basic concepts. Um, again, I'm, you know, this is not something I'm going to go through um, during the explanation video. So I just, I think I'm going to go in depth here. And then if you want to know more, I'll just point to this stream. Um, so the idea is that there's a queue and there's a consumer and producer, right? So producer sends a message to the queue, consumer reads it from the queue, done. Super simple. Now, in a basic case, you just create a queue with a name and that's it. And there's the producer that just says, hey, send this message to this queue and that's it, done, right? And then there's consumer listening to that stuff. Very simple. Uh, now, the interesting part begins when we start talking about uh, various RabbitMQ specific features. So for example, it has stuff like load balancing. You can have multiple consumers on the same queue and they will uh, for example, receive them, um, receive the messages using the round robin algorithm, right? So if we start the worker, two workers, you will actually see that we will receive um, first, third, fifth, and this one will receive second, fourth. So basically, this gives you load balancing out of the box, right? Um, again, this is quite simple. Then there's publish, subscribe. So uh, you can configure. Um, topics that will allow you to do pop sub stuff. Nothing too complicated about this again. Again, I mean, you have to read through the like terminology and all the basic code. I mean, this is Python, but it works more or less the same in all of them. So you just have to know the correct parameters to set to the uh, exchanges, queues and uh, messages you send. That works fine. Uh, this is boring part. So let's talk about routing. Yes. So uh, Instead of just saying, you know, here's a queue and there can be one subscriber and one um, publisher, you can actually declare uh, queues with specific keys that will be, depending on what kind of message publisher sends, it will be routed to a different queue and different subscriber. This is actually what, it, what is interesting for us, right? In the very simple uh, case, it is just basically key-based filtering. So like, for example, here's an um, error message routing. Yeah, so you just say uh, routing key is log severity. And then, you know, if it's an error, it's going to go to error logger. And if it's uh, info warning, whatever other stuff is going to go to another logger, right? So this is uh, straightforward as well. Now, there are topics which, is, uh, which allow for way more complex routing. So for example, Topics uh, comprise of words separated by dot. So I don't think you can use any special symbols here, only dots, stars, or hashes. Um, so the cool thing is that if you listen for dot orange dot, uh, star dot orange dot star, that will mean that anything that has first like some word in the beginning, then orange and some word in the end will go here. If you listen to lazy dot hash, it means that anything that starts with lazy, be it just lazy or lazy dot whatever, will go to this queue. And this is what we're going to use here to actually um, balance and, you know, create servers. So um, it's not very hard to do it. I mean, I won't talk about RPC because RPC is basically in this case is useless. And I mean, if you want to re read it yourself, but, you know, remote procedure call is exactly what you expect. So in this case, we could use um, MQP lib. It's not that hard to use, but um, I got tired of writing all the boilerplate. So I wrote my own library that uses MQP lib to uh, create a higher level abstraction, I guess, over it, which allows you to create microservices uh, literally in like two lines. 
that's that's all you need to do, right? So you just create a runner and then you subscribe to a topic, whatever you want. And then you just get a reply function where you reply with a result. Now, this is what we're gonna use, um, or at least where we're gonna start from. So I'm gonna do yarn add micro work and we are gonna do this and we're gonna paste it here. So um, rabbit hosts for now, I'm just gonna say that it is local host, right? And exchange, we're gonna say uh, data science. Uh, yeah, whatever, let's just call it. So exchanges are sort of global groups for channels that are uh, used to distinguish between multiple apps within one, uh, within one uh, RabbitMQ instance or cloud. Um, let me have a quick look at the chat. Uh, you haven't missed too much right now. Yeah, I've been talking about RabbitMQ um, and now we're starting to do that stuff, like basically code that stuff. So let's do that module exports. So it's gonna be our start function. Uh, it's gotta be a sync, right? So because we wait here. By the way, I absolutely love um, using a sync await. We don't really need cleanup now. So this, this should start the uh, new runner. And uh, we can also create a simple test uh, JS file where we are gonna do that. So I'm gonna copy this and uh, in test JS file, we're just gonna say, um, if I send the messages, I forgot. So we create this yeah, master, for example. We we'll connect with the same and then we can send the message uh, to work and then we subscribe uh, to replies. Save it response topic. So in this case, yeah, let's, so basically this is the, you know, the very basic thing, uh, probably master. And uh, if in this case we start the index.js, so we should see that it's, you know, it's connected, other worker for the work. If we start test.js, uh, size a bit. Um, no, it didn't start. Oh yeah, right, of course. Um, because this on run and run this stuff. There you go. Test. You can actually see that it actually sent hello to the do work and received hello world in the reply. So if you have a good abstraction, creating microservices is actually as simple as that. Um, now, in our case, it has to be slightly more complex than this, right? So, because um, first of all, so I think we're gonna start from scratch and maybe later I introduce another library I wrote that would um, abstract parts of the work that we do here. Um, basically make it easier for us to, you know, instead of just writing boilerplate every time. So let's build first service from scratch and then we can introduce another library that will simplify that. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna return um, teardown function, which is gonna say run or stop. And uh, so the idea is that once we start writing unit tests, uh, this thing will connect to rabbit and the unit test will never exit, right? Because something is taking up the port. So we're gonna take a teardown function and uh, I guess this and use it to tear down the tests. Okay, so um, we are say gonna listen for open critic and in this case, we're gonna say console log dot message message. So basically, and then we're gonna open test, um, subscribe, but we don't care about that. So we say open critic destiny 2, right? So we say we want to search for destiny 2. Say no index, uh, no test. Okay, we got the message destiny 2. I guess just using text is not exactly the best way. So we're gonna say, uh, we're gonna use a JSON object, which basically gives us more flexibility later on. Means if we send it now, we should see uh, exactly JSON object here. By the way, if you are not using MicroWork, if you are doing it by hand, you will have to decode in codes um, stuff into byte arrays or I think it's strings in MQP lib case yourself. So MicroWork handles the JSON encoding for you essentially. 
Okay, so we're gonna say, okay, game from message. Uh, I guess in this case, it actually will be better to call it data. And um, in this case, uh, what we want is we wanna scrape it, right? So we're gonna, first of all, we're gonna search for it. In this case, let's have a look how this stuff works. Our console, there's a bunch of errors. Uh, so if we start this, uh, this too. So this is how it search. And it actually gives out JSON. So we might as well just use that, right? So this is the URI we want. Um, okay, on search URL, go. And criteria is gonna, be, why is it only searching? this no it doesn't that, that's actually oh i guess i guess it filters it on a client side that is very curious i wonder what will happen if we send it no it does search properly okay so uh, search url let's call it search url base right so this is once uh ammo case okay so um const to request URL, this is gonna be basically search URL base, right? And then here we encode URI components and we say game. This is our URL that we should request. Now, what do we use for um, for requests? I mean, we can just go with request JS, but your request, is there anything better? Like maybe just go for like server side fetch or something. Mm -hmm. And oh, I don't like. I feel like spending too much time. There's Axios. There's yes. Fetch. No. Maybe there's a. I mean, I I really like Fetch API, but is there a good Fetch library for Node? Mm -hmm. Template literals are indeed amazing. Yeah, I completely agree with you. Using them changes the way that you build strings pretty much cardinally. Okay, let's see what we have here. Uh, get, get, yeah, this is not the request. Yes, no request, not fetch. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, few dependencies. Few dependencies sounds like a nice thing. And I do like Axios as well, so we might as well stop on you know what? Let's go with let's go with let's try a node fetch. Okay, so I'll let this yarn adds node fetch. Go with that because why not? And I guess I just yeah, I require fetch from packages and it's gonna say fetch require fetch. There we go. On feed bars, let's do this. Okay, so const result is gonna be uh, a wait. So this gotta be actually, oops, sync. Gonna fetch our request URL. And then we're gonna say that we want uh, JSON, right? So because now you want fetch. And we're gonna console uh, the log result. Come on. There we go. Okay. No index. Go oh, no test. So there we go. It actually works perfectly fine. Cool. Uh, so we basically we get results. Uh, results. It's multiple. Top hit is gonna be results uh, zero, right? So this is our top hit. Now, how the hell do I come from the top hit and to the um, game action? So our top hit is destiny. Uh, Destiny two and then ID. Okay, so we concatenate on game URL, which is gonna be this open critic game. This is gonna be a game ID. So this top hit uh, dot ID, and this is gonna be top hit dot uh, name or no? No, it's not name, isn't it? Like destiny minus two. I wonder. Can I just open this? Uh, no, I can't. Or, no, wait. That, that just seems to be failing. We don't even have 404 here. Just Okay, um, I guess that 
gotta be name but sluglify uh so name but 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 but, but. i think um i guess we can just use lodash um yeah i i, I mean i love lodash there we go Okay, we got the Lodash, and now let's have a look at the docs. Size a bit. Uh, does it sluglify? Uh, where's the string now? String. Mm. Or was it? It was kebab case, right? Yeah, it is. Okay. We are wire Lodash. I'm gonna say uh, kebab case. There you go. I think that is a correct URL. So let's test it. So Destiny Two, yeah. Theoretically, if we now uh, no test that index, oh, and then test that. And if I click on it, uh, it's open in the wrong browser. But it's yes, it is indeed working. Cool. Uh, you haven't seen it because it opened in the other monitor, but trust me, this is basically the correct URL. And as well, compare it. Or, yeah. Cool. Uh, I mean, we can try some other game just to be sure. Say Shadow of War. Yeah, there you go. It's a pretty complex title, right? So, uh, Middle Earth Shadow of War. Let's try that. I'm going to say send here uh, this. Test and there you go. And if we um, copy thing, e, and it's working. Cool. So we got the URL extraction properly, or search, I guess. Right. So let's go back to Destiny Two and use it as our test subject. Um, what we need to do after that, I mean, we actually don't really need to run the whole thing to test it, right? So because we can just Say that uh, parts start with um, URL gonna be name. I'm gonna take a name is gonna be a sync. So I'm gonna extract all that stuff here. Turn game URL right. Well. Uh, well, yeah, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, I picked up. I know, I know. There we go. And yep. Oh, this thing. There we go. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah, this name. Okay. So, um, it actually shouldn't be here, but whatever. For now, I'll just leave it there. So let's say const. Um, so we got the game URL. Basically, get game view links, right? So the next step is we need to uh, take this URL and and convert it to a set of links that we're gonna crawl, right? Okay. So uh, in this case, const page is gonna be a wait fetch. L and R R I believe wait a second MBN fetch. I believe it is dot text. Uh fetch yeah, there you go. And it is come on. Fetch maybe. Mm -hmm. Text. No oh, response blob. Response. The response object is what we want. And header okay. Blob form data JSON dot text here. I am indeed correct. I keep I mean I'm always unsure if I, if I remember things correctly. Uh and then return page. Okay, so for now I'm just gonna return that stuff and uh in this case const finds uh reviews. We're gonna say sync. Uh, data. Okay, and in this case, we're gonna say I'm just gonna do that. 
ignore the um, micro ward for now. And after that, we're going to get inks. Inks. Turn ready. Okay. So uh, let us towards find review. That. Then in test, we can just comment all of, I mean, this for now, and then we can just say on name of it, find review. Our source, so we're just gonna require directly and then find rate sixteen two. If we just add that anymore, no test. Uh, find rate is not a function. How come it's not a function? I, I guess because I, yeah, right. Okay, I guess model exports. I'm keep forgetting how the exports work with it. And the URL must be a parameter, not a string. Uh, oh, yeah. You too, this is what we, okay. Drag this and say, aim. Uh, ah, but I just did that. Aim, uh, get, get, L. Yeah, we did that, so that's, Lock. Start game URL. Yeah, game URL. Let us proceed with console log debugging. The links. Uh, oh yeah. God damn it. Right. I am. Um, I should have ate all of that stuff. Right. Because we are sync. Oh. Oops. I should actually. And cool. So now we actually have uh, results, but. The resulting thing seems to be uh, quite <laughs> quite empty. So I'm assuming they load the data about the reviews using Ajax here, right? Um, right, okay, so let me just, oh, we're gonna clear that. We are gonna say destin2, click on it. Now we're gonna have a look at, at this modified, no, this is, Different predicting not the filtering. Really makes sense. Okay, try to refresh it. What happens? So this one is yeah, it's exactly it's empty. Gets data from somewhere else. Question is where the hell does it? There's a script. There's an XHR request. Yeah, I out that API. Yeah, oh, so they have API. Okay, wait a second. Maybe I am being silly and they have a public API. And all of this was um I does it really have an API? Walking official API, blah blah blah. Okay. We're just gonna, you know what, I'm gonna reverse you. I don't I don't <laughs> I really wanna talk to you. I'm a lazy person. Okay, so it actually is way easier because we can do that, which means that constructing of a link just became like 10 times. Okay, yeah, that, make, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, this here literally says API, I should have been more careful about that. But okay, uh, so this is a uh, game URL. I mean, I guess it doesn't really make sense to do well here. We can info base. This is going that right. That's from, and then we just pop hit get team. Which means this is gonna be game data. Um, game, okay. 
Preview links as a just go game data. In this case, the data here. Okay, const URL is going to be base and then game dot id, right? So we construct that. Um, Send it game data. Let's just call it that. I guess we should actually return. Right, so we just extend the data. Got full game data. Let's call it this way. Send it game data. Uh, let's call this and uh, in this case let's have a look if it actually includes the reviews uh there is a ton of them snippets yes yeah, snippets are fine yeah but it has a url so okay. oh and it's even have authors that's actually pretty good like pretty good graph in here cool so theoretically if we run test yes now we should see a what wait what oh right okay uh, because that should not be text, that should be JSON now, right? There we go. Okay, so we actually got the whole data thing. And now we're interested in reviews, right? So we don't really care about uh, other fields right now, at least. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through reviews, which is dot .reviews, looks like. Okay, cons reviews is game it uh reviews, uh, I think it's from capital S capital R. Uh reviews, yeah, exactly. Cool. And uh reviews, uh so theoretically we should now see an array of Yeah. Uh, oh all right, I don't I don't really log that right. This this seems to be fine. Then this console log s right. Okay, cool. So we got the array of items that looks like this. See one of them. Mm, I guess we can just do this. And okay, there we go. There's our thing with authors and everything. Favorite games even. Uh, this into a game. Okay, we already have a title. We have a published date. We have external URI. We have a small snippet, which is actually quite nice for a display purpose. But what we're missing here is uh, obviously the text for it, right? So uh, what we need to do here is map them. Review. Map them to enrich review with uh let's call it generation review is text right so now we need that in review is text function which will take a review and uh, it's gonna be a sync we actually need to say await and then say promise all because this is an array of promises now okay so we got a review which means we're gonna get URL from it. This is gonna be review external URL. Um, then we're gonna say const review text. Gonna be uh, await fetch. Well, I mean, I guess we can skip that. I expect all of those reviews to have external URLs, but we're gonna see. Maybe that doesn't work. Um, so page ML let's this way and then then our text right so we got that um you know what for testing purposes I'm gonna say device one don't run it on everything right now and uh here's the deal so this is um console log ML let's do that so the thing is 
even though this is going to get the whole page here, um, I assume review is on it. Uh, yeah, there you go. That's in the review. Every aspect. Yeah, that looks like a review. So basically, the thing is that besides the review, this page has a bunch of uh, things that are not exactly useful for us, right? Hmm? I think so. That. Let me just console log this URL and we're going to have a look at it. Land magazine. Let's go look, have, have a look at Slant Magazine. So thing number one, uh, this has, you know, obviously what you would expect to see on a magazine website, there's additional things that lead to their other articles. There's some additional information, there's comments, there's discussions, whatever. And this is stuff we're not interested in, right? So we're only interested in the core information. Uh, now there is, um, bunch of approaches um, about extracting body contents. Uh, and there's, I think, Unfluff uh, for Python was probably one of the most prominent uh, or easiest, I guess, uh, libraries to use. It was a statistical base, but it seems like it's been abandoned. Is there anything better right now? Okay, uh, HTML content extraction. See Node.js. So there's basically a rewrite of this on fluff as node on fluff. Um, and it's, it works okay. So, I mean, it's not like, you know, perfect obviously, but it works fine and it extracts mostly the, what you expect to see. Um, the thing with it is that maybe there's something better that I don't know about. Uh, scraping node with web.js. Let's see. So yeah, that's node on fluff. Here you always, yeah, that's not what we want. Main text. Uh, it's not stable. Open scraping. Two years ago. That seems outdated. That is five months ago. What about Node on Fluff? Is it still under development? Nine months ago, three years ago. Extract main content. Um, yeah, I guess you can try. Oh, you, you, it even has the Traction ordered from what is that? That is a Ruby library. Um, yeah, why not? We can as well try that. Yes, yeah, I mean, why not? Let's try that. Seems to be that we don't even have to do the uh, request ourselves, so great. Okay, let's do this body extractor. Uh, this is another thing to use. Const extractor. There we go. Um, bit. So extractor URL, and we're gonna do that. Extractor. We're gonna say this over here. Wait. Next. Uh, await. Does this is a promise. Uh, and we can just, uh, I guess it's not actually text because it's an object. So we, right, extractor type, extractor. oh, do you have text? Just say result and then let's see if this way. See if that actually works. That is a lot of stuff. Um, Readable, let's pipe it to Sublime. There you go. Okay. So we, uh, okay. Extendable as well. Let's just say, oops. I'm still confused as what is result, what is part of the tractor. There you go. Uh, so, okay, this is the tractor view then. This is the result. Result, okay, result is this. Review is blah, blah, blah. Okay, so result is the plain text. Cool, this is actually text. 
And is there anything useful from the extractor? So obviously this is now uh, main text. I guess we already care about other stuff, right? So let's try to use that one. And uh, return sign. So we're gonna assign review. I'm gonna say text. Uh, new field. Yes, and now if you yes, look, uh, this come from this library just outputs bollocks in my console. I don't want to use that. No, no, why are you doing this? Okay, you know what? No. I am not gonna use a library that does this. Uh, okay, still don't have alias for m. Remove. Right. Okay. Back to unplug. We go. I guess. Unless there is something better. Uh, no HTML. Code. Get main HTML content. Maybe. Cheerio. They have Cheerio stuff. That would be nice. I like Cheerio. Uh, see what do people recommend i mean we might as well just stop on unfluff because i know it works pretty much fine it's not the super highest quality and there's sometimes some bits that basically get in there but pfft, whatever traversing no this is like cheerio stuff this is not what i want um main maintainers is not what i want uh there's the docs somewhere else right and tom sponsoring this project loading okay i guess i'm fluff it is are odd and fluff okay to cons age html um await fetch fetch this url we we'll say then our text so text and then the text is gonna be uh fluff and fluff and we're gonna just run extractor uh pink right pink Now let us see how does the result looks. Uh, come on, sublime. Let us have a look. There you go. Okay. I mean, as you can see, you know, it works perfectly fine. Reviews based. Yeah, it seems to be uh, more or less correctly extracted things. Uh, it actually yeah, also gets keywords, I guess, from the. Uh, from the page itself, from the meta tag, right? So we might say, what we wanna do here is I'm gonna expand the review. I'm gonna say that text is results. Close sublime now, right? No, I didn't. It's gonna be text. Then we are gonna say that uh links we wouldn't care about all that stuff i mean the i guess why i mean let's store let's just store it just in case if we care about it say extract it and just put the whole thing in there why not cool now if we run this again test js um yeah okay okay i get it code let's pipe it to code maybe Uh, okay, code doesn't have pipes. That's interesting. I thought it worked last time. Okay, uh, you know what? Let me just increase the size here. JSON. Right, so here we have our destiny title snippet. Now we have the full text here. I mean, I guess that looks fine. So we can run the extraction on text. Now we have um, some keywords here. We have... We even have image here. Nice. Okay. 
you know what let's go with that why not okay um right so we got the reviews and now we need to remove this slice <coughs> i'm sorry so one of the problems that we might encounter actually is the fact that if we have like um what's the length of this thing Hog. Uh, yeah have not pipe that's 117 so if we run that in parallel we're gonna get banned very quick <laughs> i don't really want to do that um is there a way i mean i can just chunk it i guess but Mm, uh, do, 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 notes promises parallel limit. So I want to run a bunch of promises in parallel with a limit, right? Limit number of promises in parallel. I don't know if Bluebird has it, but I want to like I'm, I mean I'm fine with the native promises. Uh, C wait is yes, TypeScript. Uh, task queue map. Just seems to rely on the bluebird. And what about that? Promise all uh, jobs map return limit job name. The function that basically uh, you run. Ah, you know what? Let's just let's just do it as old old, old way. Old way with a for loop. Um, you know, not the prettiest way, but um, easy way. Um, okay. okay, all reviews. Yeah, come on, it's length plus. Now we also need reviews for example here are from i right um, new review and yes new reviews are wrong so which review is the correct term here Reviews and push. Um, why all that? Uh, yeah, okay. Go and reach review here. Then I think you're complaining because of weight of inside of loop. Yeah, but in this okay. Okay. Um, so now. Um, if we run this, I guess we need some logging. Log process. Reviews. Uh, reviews. Link. This. Hey, come on, left, no, left. Okay, so now theoretically, if we run that, there you go, seems to be working. So it's gonna run it like at most one requests at a time. Um, again, you know, if you like in theory, I would actually, what we wanna do here is we wanna say that sleep function, which will take time and uh, which we call uh, timeout resolve in a timeout uh, with a given time. And what we want to do is we want to say sleep for a second here because as soon as you start hammering something from your servers, you're gonna get banned very quick, and that is not nice to other people, you know. We're, we don't want to be bad, bad citizens. Let's do it properly. Okay, uh, it's gonna take a while. So I am gonna say, um, let's maybe take a game that doesn't have that many reviews. 
Um, what do we have here? Something maybe indie, something not as big. Maybe Ruiner is better. Reviews does it have? Uh, thirteen seventeen. Yeah, that looks better. So let's let's take Ruiner. Um, test gonna go for Ruiner here. It's gonna be like what thirty reviews. Gonna take thirty seconds to finish and it's still quite some. Okay. Okay, uh, so we did that, and now basically what we need to do is to plug that back into the micro work, right? So, and here's the thing um, even though we do processing uh, one by one here, we actually don't need to store it anywhere. This is essentially useless, right? So, do and to you. The thing is that once we um, once we run that, we are actually gonna dispatch the review back into the uh, storage, so that every time we get a new review, we're gonna say, "Hey, here's a new review with full text. Please save it in the storage and then run it through processing." So, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say. I'm gonna create a method called store which will be review, which will take in a review, come up, up. It's gonna trigger reply, it's gonna store, and this is gonna be a review, right? Then once I am done, um, I'm gonna say um call it scrape reviews. On this state, it's gonna take data first. It's gonna take store function second. Uh, and store. And uh, in this case, it's gonna trigger store and reach review. And we're gonna await it so that you know take a bit more time, obviously. But uh, Basically it, I think we have like finished our first microservice. So I'm gonna, gonna tell that part. I'm gonna sub subscribe to store function. That's the science, so we got that. We gonna game. I, I wanted to try this, I really wanted. I saw this feature or uh, this thing on, um, what do you call it on Twitter that you can actually pass callers through and then you will see. Oh, nice colored output from the node console. So I really wanted to try this. Okay, so we start our index service. It should just, yeah, connect. And then we start a test. It should send its winner, 31 reviews. And now once the review comes in, we should start it back in the test script. And we actually are not seeing it here for some reason and is why store so it sends it to store with um oh that's why we... <laughs> okay i yeah um i don't know if you've noticed but i've been a bit of a uh, under weather today so that's why i might not be as sharp as ever and do a lot of stupid mistakes um i am using callers true incorrectly it seems or was it just the deer i guess maybe it's just called deer Try that. That. Okay, come on. No. Okay, yeah. Now we have the colors. Now we have the object. So as you can see here, we're getting the response back, uh, which works perfectly nice. Okay, now since we're talking microservices and they should be uh, self-healing, self-sufficient, self-repairing, whatever. And error prone uh, testing becomes very important. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to write a unit test here. Um, I am going to add no tap. Uh, that was the wrong thing to do. Was it just tap? tap. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Tap. And we're going to write a um, test case that will actually sure our service works right 
we can leave or I can out. Um, doesn't really matter. We can just we can add the logging. I mean, why not? Let you know what? Let's let's add the logger. Close all of that. No JS logging. So what is the cool? What is the good? Like I, I'm usually using Winston, but is there anything better right now? Do you guys know if there's any libraries better than Winston? Something that would provide um like nice transports and everything. Uh, strong loop and strong loop has a decent articles. Yeah, obviously console is enough. And transporters Bunyan Bunyan is not bad, but L loggers. Uh, you know what? Let's just check yarn package. Maybe good recommendation. Please logger. State, uh, is there any way to no, some PMGS? Let's try and PMGS logging. Come on, for all popularity. What is popular? Log tiny logger with stream reader. That I want to talk about for JS. Um, uh, Winston, okay, Winston. Yeah, you know what? Let's go with Winston. Add Winston. Um, so we're gonna create logger JS, and in this case, you know what? I'm gonna be super lazy, and I'm gonna just gonna go to one of my projects. Have logger. There you go. I'm gonna use my typical logging setup. So basically, what I do here is I just say, you know, if we're testing on the output errors. If we're not testing, then if we're in production, use info, otherwise show debug. And by default, it is the uh, console output uh, transport. So we're going to say this is what service. And it's going to colorize, put timestamps and pretty print stuff for us. Okay. Um, am I not using Lodash at all? Okay, so we don't really need Lodash. Dash, cool. Read of a dependency, that's always good. Logger. Why? Logger, right? So, logger info. Uh, getting reviews for. So, that's just basically, you know, some basic level of uh, logging so that we know that it actually works. And then, in this case, we're going to say. Bug dot data. Probably there's gonna be a lot of noise here, but you know, in the debug mode, uh, next game data logger bug processing reviews. Links so that we you know we, we have some way of basically seeing that it actually runs and controlling it or at least monitoring it properly locally. Um, right, and um, say to them so we yeah, bug and play literal because I'm lazy. I plus one. Left sling I okay, and then I am gonna copy my hint here. I'm gonna say that rule that it complains about. So first of all, no plus plus. Turn it off because in this case. Okay, and then the other rule is no wait in loop. Also gonna turn off. Okay, is it not standard? No await in loop. Wait off. And now we have a nice no errors, no anything. Right, okay. Um now let's get testing bit. Right, so we got our test here. 
test wire tap. Uh, we are gonna test thing. And this is gonna be a uh, great tick service, right? Uh, so it has to end tap and silly test and uh, first test basically should process full gate uh, it it g okay uh f before we actually started so this is gonna be second and pm packages uh to gonna be our package Our service, this by your source, right? We're gonna we need to store clean up pointer. Well, it's gonna be no op. Test should start service. C -E. This, go. Okay, and then actually up. Test the cleanup as well, and plus, you know, up. Four, and here we just. So if we run the NPM test right now, it should start. Uh, oh, yeah, wait. What move test? let's just call it TV. now a script and this is gonna be node test yes uh, start script which is gonna be index yes so it's a good script test okay um something doesn't seem to be working uh so uh, first of all, we need to test. Test or was it test? Or so open critic input service. Uh, start service then. E and eight subscribe. Yeah, so that's good. Should be fine, right? So you should connect and then he doesn't. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> uh, I'm being silly, of course. Yeah, I should end it, right? That's the thing. There we go. Okay. Um now let me be a bit lay a bit more lazy and copy my nice coverage thing from here because I never remember that bonkers. We go okay so we don't need coverage for now i don't think timeout is important either but if it let run yes now it uh, reporters bag bed option no tap increase the size of the side panel which is a bit weird ah i have to call tab okay let's take an npm test Hey, there we go. Okay, there we go. Cool. So basic thing works. Now, uh, what we need to do is we need um, knock, right? Because we need to fake calls to those uh, URLs. Okay, um, con knock by your knock. Uh, let me think, come on, move uh, knock this much. That knock, so we knock, knock thing, get, yeah, okay. Set up, knock, uh, point, tests. Okay, so here's the thing. I'm gonna copy that. Where this URL is this, right? 
and then call. I guess I guess we don't care about tear down in this case, so we can say that I search this, and then how do we response reply to hundred by hundred, and then we give the response data, right? Um, I think I closed the open critic a bit. Um, oh yeah, we need the third URL as well, which will go for destiny two. Um, I probably should have opened the console first. Fresh. That. Oh come on. Destiny two. There you go. Okay. Uh, response. Raw thing. Thank you very much. There you go. So we're just going to take this thing and uh, put that as a response data. So now I guess it's better to data. Let's just go away. Okay. Quest is going to. Um, game so search response is this, and in this case, we're gonna say search response. There you go. Now, this is up knock search and find that up knock. So, we need the, the Info endpoint, and in this case, game for response. So let us click on the two game. Yeah, there you go. There's the game. So let's see. Uh, here, okay, on uh, that. There you go. Okay. In this case, we only care about reviews. That should be object that has reviews part that is an array. And within array, we have one exactly one thing. Yes, we already need all of that. So we're gonna have yeah, some idea. And in this case, we only care about URL actually. So I'm just gonna keep We'll see if we need the other stuff later. Oh, up somewhere. Yeah, this, ah, yeah, there you go. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, this should be get no, info response and should process simple game. So, oh, yeah, we should as well, uh, before. Or if I can do a sync. If that will work. I remember um the tab had some issues with the sync function. Last time I tried to do that. Uh my module mock yarn. Do I have to install it? Yeah, it's installed. Okay. Test. Hey, it works out. Perfect. Okay. That makes it way easier. Uh, now we actually need our own instance of micro work, right? So because we want to send the data in somehow and get it back. So I'm going to copy that stuff. And this stuff should be main test. Let's make master science. Uh, we actually should change the local host to a configurable variable, but uh, we're gonna do that slightly later. Sync here as well. Test. Um, yeah. This Master and then a tier down, we should do it. Oh, 
Okay, ah, uh, micro work is not included. Work require micro work. There we go. Now, okay, so we subscribe to the stores and then. I'll show here. Uh, works. It uh, takes 87 seconds for it. Why? Oh, yeah, we actually haven't mocked the last URL, right? This is gonna be no. this one, right? To reply hundred. Buddy, I am destiny to review four. Okay. Um. Right. So it should. I mean, it ends, which means the message comes. So maybe it actually failed before. No. Want that? It's. It doesn't want. Is it? Was an error. What do you want? What the hell? So what is a response? Why can't I log it? No, that should be logged. I don't end it. It should fail, right? That yeah, doesn't. What the? Hmm. Yes, this was my problem with the sync last time because it just ended on the promise resolution, right? Um, yes, we can just do this. So it seems to be just finishing the test whenever the promise. Uh, wait a second. Let's see. No tap uh, promises. There you go. Is there a way to not do that? The result. Promise. So it uses T test. Yeah, sync away. There you go. Sync function T. Wait. Ah, that's what you need. No wait. Have to do. Wait T test. Alt and it this way and then we this right. same here. Oh. That means it has to be last. Is other promise result Um, I'm not liking how they're, ah, that's a bit long. I mean, in this case, it seems to be okay, but in this case, I think it's gonna be better if we normal, say that there's a sync run function, right? Run, uh, I guess we can just make it immediately in log function. Okay. Yeah, that doesn't seem to be working either. Okay, that's a bit sad. Um, right, okay. Run, let's make it. Well, why not? Oh, I smoked. This should work, right? Okay. Um, I guess in this 
that and actually try to say that this is not a whatever see the logs in reviews for that yeah okay so what is going on why is nothing reply so first thing searching for a that, that it comes to that point searching for destiny 2 yeah it does okay cool uh that game so that game is searching well does knock matches query here yes it does okay it's the query there's in this case is criteria yes we also should probably convert this to lowercase So here we will be game red game over. Okay. Try that. Okay, we move through. So I guess yeah, I guess you specify the uh in second case we get ID which should be uh virtual response zero ID, right? Cool. Okay. It actually works. Uh, but now it seems like extractor doesn't read anything from, from what I've entered here. Um, let's see if I do div as content, maybe that's div. extract anything. No, it doesn't. Um, okay. Wait a second. I'm fluff. And fluff. Um, all right, let's see. So this is the last bit we have to defeat, and then well, what are they using? To copy that inner extractor. That title, title, title. Okay. Title. Author. Oh, those are like unfluff, maybe this words for matter of are no matter inner article comment body div div. You are it seems like it. I screwed up tag summer HTML HTML body body div div you you work with title uh, okay extracted title up with the text. Just a string caption. Uh, okay, it has fixture. Test all news. There you go. Let's have a look. Uh, method. Blah, 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 blah. Blah, div. Um, yeah, I'm just try div. Okay, cool. Seriously. <laughs> Come on, man. It just work. Here, so the drop. Damn it, properly add this. Title. Okay, so this part works fine. We have body. Div. Body closes. HTML closes. Looks fine for me. Uh, what if I remove divs? I mean, we had no divs before, right? So 
That is weird. Okay, let me test. Vector require buff vector log extractor, right? So JS. Uh, yeah, that doesn't extract anything. I had some very simple test it that is wrong. I care about knock anymore because this part is working. How do I how do I make on fluff extract what I want? Extractor. Um uh, title title copyright font copyright also right no so it's not here it's Uh, this is child is div e tag. What do you want? Oh, hmm, caption. I am so confused. Okay, um, kind of structure. Do you want to properly extract bloody text from the body? Business week and gadget. Uh, post, yeah, let's try maybe div and no. Um, Plus body it has to look for I am so bloody confused right now. I've not X any text here. Um, eta, yeah, okay. Something very simple here. I'm how about Twitter? That gotta be simple enough, right? Okay, those is just like that. Copy the whole Twitter. A bit terrifying. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, on. Summer here. Oh, it's gonna take a while. No, no, come on. Go box shadow button wrapper. This okay. Ah, uh, you know what? I think I'm gonna do it differently. So let's do it this way because I mean this is also the case that might happen, right? If if result text is none, I mean there's actually a lot of edge cases that we haven't covered. Yes, we want Cheerio here, right? So the fire. So what I'm gonna do is basically say, you know, if there's no, if uh, the unfluff didn't extract anything, I'm gonna take Cheerio and just grab the text content from the post, whatever it is. Okay. Uh, so we load our L, L, and then const text. Well, text. 
text. Body. Uh, and text. I'm going to add the original ML here so that we can. It's actually a good idea to add it here as well so that we can actually have a look and figure out you know what's wrong with it okay so theoretically now if we uh, no 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 empty test we're on test now we should see that the text extracted is so the equal message idea to rename it to data data text is this stuff uh, should um, uh, text right and title external URL nope oh B B Expect title equal um, I strong URL. I mean, we already know that URL is correct, but whatever. URL just to make sure that you know. And now, if we this we test and test, we should see a nice clean test finish. There you go. Cool. It works okay um now it ignore node modules we want to ignore node modules right are only node modules uh get data get ads oh, okay we this thing okay looks good um initial version of open critic data input service with basic so if we're gonna talk about like you know properly testing this then actually there should be another simple test for you good not fail to process broken a game for example and uh, in case we should just send a string right and basically it should not fail wonder if that uh, what oh right folder uh, yeah, okay, it fails. Yeah, so as you can see, you know, it fails because we never accounted for that. Um, means that we have, so it's probably log getting ready for SD, yes, and means you need to say if a type of uh, object, right? I'm always forgetting types. object or data or there's no game or data game length we just return an error cannot get game uh, info or right then test and now it fails okay now now it doesn't fail Right, so I'm correct uh, and broken um, game data add text. There you go. Okay. Um, so now I think that's a nice point to stop, I guess.
this live stream. So I'm gonna push all of that stuff to uh, GitHub, and uh, we can uh, as well just you know call it a day here. Unless you guys have any questions, so I am uh, while I'm cleaning all this stuff up. Uh, feel free to send them in the chat. And uh, yeah, so we built our input microservice that's gonna get game requests from the UI, parse them, get the reviews, send them into pipeline, and then we're gonna dynamically using WebSockets render them in the UI with a fancy visualization of you know, everything going on around. So basically the idea. Um, yeah. Oh, so we got the input, what? what? Ooh, what is that? Nope. We're good. Uh, yeah, I guess we can kill that. So this is, you know, the very, um, the simplest version of microservice, I guess. As you can see, it took us just a bit longer than, um, how long is it? One half hour I've been streaming? Yeah, so it's uh, pretty, pretty quick to write. Um, yeah, of course. I mean, as always, feel free to rewatch it on YouTube and ask the questions on Discord or in YouTube comments. I'll be happy to answer there as well. So, okay. Um, I guess then we can just wrap this up over here. Um, thank you for watching. And as usually, I see you next time. Bye.